is going on guys wise here coming to you with one hive labs next uh base building video uh this is katic and i's second uh, attempt at some town hall 10 base building content so i'm here with the man the myth the legend katic how you doing my friend hey man it's good to be here, to be here with the town hall 11 content it's exciting yeah, isn't it absolutely so as you were we were talking about in the first sort of town hall 10 video we did uh there's sort of two ideas behind Town Hall 10 uh, defending, and first of all, you gotta, I mean, first and foremost, I would say, you, you gotta defend against another Town Hall 10. But in the same token, um, in most in most wars, if you're one of the top Town Hall 10s, a max Town Hall 10, you're, you're at the top of the chain for the 10s, there's a good chance, more often than not, that you're gonna be assigned to be bullied by, by a Town Hall 11, so that's something you gotta think about as well. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to focus on today, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's the, the main thing in wars, like uh, in all top tier wars, the top down 10s are usually bullied, fresh hit by 11s. And if you can defend one, then you're a legend, uh, basically, because it's very tough to defend. It is, it is. And we're going to hopefully, some of the things we talk about today are just uh, just some hints, some tips, some tricks. But in the end, guys, you've got to remember, this is still a bully. Um it is very difficult to, to do this. Um, so uh, all we're all we're hoping to do is maybe give you give you a little bit here to to help you out and help maybe defend that one that might end up winning you the war. And uh, let's just jump on over and check out uh, Cad's little demo base he's built here for us. It's just a small base. This is not anything special, but uh, again, um, I'm trying to keep it as light as possible to make stuff as clear as we can. Yeah, and just very simplistic, right? It just, yeah. just break it down to the basics here. Um, so uh, how do you want to start this out? Well, I just want to start by saying defending an 11 is impossible. <laughs> yeah. If you have a very good attacker against you that's not underestimating your base, um, you're going to get tripled. That's just how it is. I'm sorry to say it, but that's just how it is. And um, so what we're doing here is making it as difficult as possible for the attacker to triple your base. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Right. You, you, you want to throw a surprise in. If you can surprise a Town Hall 11 when he's hitting your base, and you're going to you have a shot right at defending. Yeah, absolutely. So once again, I want to start with the basics. What would a Town Hall 11 be looking for when he's tripling your base? Well, the usual, obviously, where the Inferno Towers are placed, probably first and foremost. Um, Definitely, yep. You know, where is the Clan Castle, and where will he engage the Clan Castle troops and the defensive queen, and where are probably the giant bombs in relation to that, um, and then maybe move on to something like where the air defense, are they exposed at all? But, I mean, the thing is, I don't know even know if it's 11 would get that far in planning. <laughs> you know no, <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> the thing is, with the Town 11 hits, they're going to use miners just because they're that strong. And if they can keep their kill squad alive for as long as possible, um, that's a super high value. I mean, they're 40 40 heroes, they will smash your base. So, what an 11 will do is he will bring a fairly small to reasonably sized kill squad. Uh, and spam miners on your base. <laughs> Generally, in some sort of boner fashion, right? Um, yes. I, you're finding they don't, you know, guys at that level don't use wizards. <laughs> they just use bowlers on uh, on other sides of whether it's golems they're bringing or just a suicide king. Um, just the bowlers give that push into the base. Like we're seeing this at all town hall levels. That's really what I think the main effect the bowlers had on every town hall level. It gives kill squads this insane push into the, into the base. And that's yeah. what they're going to do, right? Under the protection of the Grand Warden, they're going to rock a handful of bowlers into the base and then spread the miners out and let them do their thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what we need to be watching for is uh, where will they use their warden and why will they use their warden um, and where will the miners come in from. So those are the things we need to keep in mind when defending an 11, essentially. So in this example base, um, you would be looking to take out the queen. Obviously, it's not too important because the miners are just that strong. But the CC is important. I mean, I've seen a lot of people... Uh, just try to poison the baby dragon in there, but then the baby dragon flies, flies outside of the poison and giving a defend. So as you see, it's actually very important to actually be defending. Or even uh, side note, I, I literally 
just defended a bully in the Invicta War, and a huge reason was I had a, a full dragon in the clan castle. He didn't plan for yep. it, and the dragon followed the miners around. And, and killed them all. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the lastly is the Inferno Towers. Obviously, uh, they need a plan. So uh, those four things are the main thing, and obviously, um, that's the first thing I really want to talk about, is the Warden. Uh, most of the times um, is used as a, to accompany the kill squad to make sure that they get as far as possible. Like in this case, um, let me draw a line. Um, they would be expecting the kill squad to take something like this out of the base. Just yep. as an example with an entry down at the bottom. Yep. And when will they pop their warden ability? They will uh, most likely pop it when giant bombs are popping to kill their uh, bowlers or if miners are hitting an inferno tower. Uh, that's the other option. Uh, then the kill squad would get a lot less, like something like this, and they would send in the warden with the kill squad. I mean, with the bowlers. So, I mean, sorry, excuse me, the miners, um, and pop the ability once the miners hit the inferno tower or giant I, bombs. I would imagine a fresh hit eleven that was coming in from six is probably gonna is probably gonna pop the grand warden ability once a bunch of his bowlers or troops jump in sort of to that section um I, it depends how patient he is i suppose yeah um, absolutely and usually they will pop it um actually earlier because people expect giant bombs oh let me uh, make that a clearer color they will use it when uh, the kill squad is jumping into an inferno tower because they expect giant bombs in there. front of it yeah that's what that's what i was thinking i mean and even if they're not around that Inferno Tower, you have to think there's something a little fishy going on in that Queen Chamber. Um, so you can expect them to probably be, be trigger ready to, to hit that ability on fairly early entry. into that. Yeah, place. and that's the key in defending Tunnel 11 hits. And that's why I'm emphasizing this this much. Because uh, this Warden ability, I mean, this is a huge area of effect, uh, free spell, in essence. Yep. Um, Controlling the Warden ability is basically controlling the rate of the attacker. Yep. So that's your main goal as a defender. Where is he going to use this ability? Can you force it early enough that he's going to walk in a trap in a different area of the base um, where he actually would have needed it but doesn't have it anymore? Yeah, exactly. Same so, idea, right, with, a, with a, a Queen Walk and forcing the early Queen ability. So she dies, dies a later point. Yeah, it's, it's the exact same same, exactly the same thing. Um, so that's the main thing you want to focus on uh, when defending and how can you force a warden ability. For example, with giant bombs, your Inferno Tower, uh, having somewhat of a trap there with the CC troops, uh, heroes, all that jazz. Um, I mean, in this case, everything is converging in this area around this uh, air defense. And maybe they pop the ability early, they might actually... Um, trigger two of the giant bombs but in this case the back end giant bombs will be untouched so that's the goal here yep. um, if this were a bowler attack uh, they would li uh, most likely come straight at the inferno towers in this case the base doesn't suit it but sometimes they have to go through an inferno tower to get to the core and then these core giant bombs would be even better um, but th that doesn't matter too much uh, the goal is uh, trigger that warden ability early and have a trap elsewhere in the base where the kill squad will not come. Absolutely. If that makes sense. So the next step is um, the miners. Miners will be coming in from, could be coming in from every single angle. And in this case, it's most likely that they're coming from the uh, three to four o'clock section. And this is another thing. Um, I don't think I've mentioned this in the previous video. Uh, miners can be very predictable in where they go. They path a bit like uh, hawks would do, and they go to the edges of buildings, and then go to to the next edge, go to the next edge, and so on and so forth. See what what is happening here around this inferno tower. Yeah, they're going to path all the way around the inferno tower, and the only thing lure, actually luring them in might be the skeleton, skeleton trap. So um, maybe these skeletons are in place well enough. Um, <laughs> and I guess that's a catch I mean, twenty two with your skeleton traps, right? Um, yeah. Same idea as not putting buildings in there for bowlers to attack and then happen to get the splash damage onto the inferno. Skeleton traps could yank, 
troops to the Inferno Tower, which you're trying to obviously avoid. But at the same time, if they're on the Inferno Tower, they will distract the miners for forever yeah. and give give it a shot to uh, killing the miners. Yep. So what you want to be doing with your buildings, and I've seen this in effect quite uh, on quite a few raids, is that the miners will evade um, the Inferno Tower at all costs. Now. Again, this does not mean you're defending if they ignore the Inferno Tower. It's just a tool you can use. I mean, I've seen a raid where the first Inferno Tower, like with a mass miner attack, like uh, they would come in with a, a full on wall. They went all the way through the base, ignored the first Inferno Tower, went back, and he still got the triple. <laughs> yeah. That was Team Unique. It did it in an arranged war. No, um, the... it, it actually happened. Obviously, I, obviously, your goal is to have that happen, but that doesn't, like you said, it doesn't. It doesn't guarantee any anything. Defend. Yeah, it's just uh, one of the tools you use to create a snowball effect into maybe actually defending. So um, the next thing I want to touch on is the with the wizard towers. I've placed them in this base uh, because the splash damage of these uh, babies actually is very, very deadly to miners. Uh, they are one of the best defenses against miners, and you want to play, place them strategically, uh, of course. So um, use those uh, to your advantage, maybe even place some giant bombs in between them. Uh, try to force a heal, because that's one thing, the, the one thing wizard towers do, they force heals. Well, I mean, same respectively to what we were talking about with the Grand Warden and Queen Walks and, and just forcing things early. It's the same thing with miners. You force early heals on the miners, that they, they, they pitter out at the end. They do. I mean, they, you, they do get that critical mass, but if you force early heals and they hit some bad things later on the base, that's that's pretty much your only shot at defending them. Yeah, exactly. And the last thing um, you can do versus miners specifically is also like uh, like I've drawn here, is create a path where they will split up. Like uh, same story with hogs. Like two groups of hogs are less strong than just one, um, one giant group yeah. of hogs with uh, on the same token. Like if they hit a double giant bomb, they might be toast. But if they are untouched, they will be way stronger than two separate groups. So splitting miners is actually in your defender's um, advantage. One thing, one thing I talk about when when I'm talking about uh, doing recaps and showing attacks is all the attacks sort of have a theme, and you're somehow trying to create a way for all of your troops to move in a unison kind of group, either clockwise or counterclockwise around the base, right? So they can get double benefits from heals and double benefits from pretty much everything. And like you just said, that that death ball is what you want. So when you're thinking like a defender, if you can create zones that you know miners are going to have to enter or anything really and they're going to split off into those smaller groups that's that leaves you in, in really good shape as a defender absolutely so another thing that works really well town on nine and has proven to work at town 10 as well is tesla farms i haven't shown them here but uh imagine a back-end tesla farm like over here for example a couple of teslas um they can be very deadly I mean, imagine like uh, a group of miners coming in, they have forced to heal early, they're forced a second heal, and then this giant bomb triggers just outside of the heal, so they're forced to heal here. They might just end up in the Tesla farm without any heals left. Yep. And the kill squad dying uh, in this corner to the kill squad, I mean the CC troops, I mean, it's not likely going to happen, but I've seen Tunnel 11 hits uh, die out on the Tesla farm. Just because it was well protected and uh, it was in an unexpected place uh, against the proactive darkness uh, war, um, a Tesla farm actually defended two bullies, I believe, maybe even three. Yeah. Um, just one Tesla farm was the trick to defending bullies. It can uh, work. And that's the last point. Um, it's the unexpected traps. The unexpected trap is the deadliest. Yeah... If you can't plan for it, if you haven't planned for it, and uh, you don't see uh, see it during the war, and you're not anticipating it, um, you might be using spells too early, as we talked about, and they will peter out. You w just won't have enough for the back end. One thing, one thing you got to think of as a defender is you got to think as an attacker. And when I know when I'm attacking a base, and you've created a plan in your head and you've gone over it a hundred times and you're ready to go and you go hit attack and 
10 seconds into the attack, something happens, a surprise happens, and it throws everything off and you have to readjust on the fly. That's where mistakes get made. And that's basically what you're trying to do with these surprises, right? You, you want to force mistakes. You want to you wanna get the guy panicking when he's dropping his troop to, troops, right? And, and just things like that. And that's, that's going to help you in the long run. Yeah, for example, imagine there being a Tesla over here that pops with the, the funnel creation, then another pops over here. I mean, just a hap- hypothetical case, of course. But this golem will move over and move on around. And all of a sudden, the kill squad is going in without a golem. Yep. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> so then the attacker is all of a sudden on the fly. Got to make a decision. Does he does he readjust his entry? Uh, you know, like is that can I can he kill that Tesla somehow? So the golem stops at that corner, like, and you're making the guy think and make these split second decisions while he's dropping troops on a touchpad. It's you know you're creating that room for error, and that's that's all you can really really do when you're defending a board. Yeah. And um, as you can see, I have got a couple of small bombs around the Inferno Towers. I mean, these Inferno Towers aren't maxed, but with maxed Inferno Towers, these small bombs actually do a lot of work. So those are some of the things uh, that can help you. Um, I mean, just like at the Town on 9, where you would have these um, semi-double uh, giant bombs, where you would use four small bombs with the one big one, yep. uh, with a giant bomb, and that would basically kill hogs, well... Almost killed. Would your recommendation be to not use your your GBs in like uh, I think on my like on my base for example right now I think I have one GB and a couple small bombs near my inferno tower like that. Would you do you think it's more beneficial to use them your GBs elsewhere in your base? I would uh, most likely recommend like as depicted here in the core uh, because um, again the warden ability. Okay, yeah. The Warden ability will be expected to need to be popped around an Inferno Tower, and if you can protect the Inferno Tower well enough, they will be forced still to use the Warden ability there and then uh, run out in the core because the Giant Bombs actually do work there. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, using one Giant Bomb per Inferno Tower, that sounds good to me. Sometimes even two. I mean, if you're, if you're certain someone will come in from this angle, um, why not use a double but giant bomb still on the other side of the base next to the inferno tower? I mean, again, um, this is very de- base dependent. Yeah. Um, so if you know where they're coming from, you can adjust to uh, that angle where they're coming from. Yeah. Um, and that's what I would do. Like uh, with all town tents, friendly challenges are very important into uh, deciding where you want your traps. I mean, the traps here are just uh, guesswork on uh, a frame of uh, of a base. Like this isn't even a, a very good base, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I got I get what you're saying, and and, and I mean, you see, once you throw your base out for a dozen friendly challenges, you see a trend, right, in, in how people look and break down your base. Um, so you see common entry points for get people that are attacking your base on the fly. So you're gonna want to adjust your traps accordingly. Absolutely. Um, so once again, keep in mind, um, this is Tunnel 10 we're talking about. Um, this is a very touchy subject when it comes to uh, the finer details. Um, we will be bringing out more of these, I think. Uh, I mean, more yeah, advanced absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. I think, I think what my goal is with sort of this content is I would like to start developing this into... Um, uh, sort of like the friendly challenge series we were doing with the nines to slay my base kind of c- trying to maybe do that as well we'll get some more guys involved maybe even and uh, we'll have 10 versus 10s or, or things like that and try and try and tie them into sort of educational things within uh, base building but that'll that's all down the road here but we definitely are going to have yeah. more detailed content for everybody but keep in mind, this is Town 10, and we're not going to give everything away. So yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> practice yourself. Think, think for yourselves. Like, um, wars are won at the Town 10 level. So think for yourselves what's going to work and why is it going to work. And just as with uh, Town 9, every single building um, needs to have a purpose in the base. And if a building uh, you find does not have a purpose in your base, then why do you have it there? Isn't it better to change it up? Place it somewhere else. I mean, for example, I'm just going to show it here. Uh, This compartment, for example, uh, if you're in here with a kill squad, like uh, in the core, um, a queen can reach all the way to these back-end wizard towers. I mean, those details 
uh, would break this base. So keep in mind, uh, your wizard towers are some of the most important defenses versus miners because of the AoE damage. Your inferno towers, I mean, they're your inferno towers. They're, they're the thing you need to defend. And uh, set it up in such a way that people will run into unexpected things like Tesla farms, like uh, spring traps that are very effective, um, skeleton traps that lure stuff away, uh, and uh, I've mentioned Tesla farms already, haven't I? Or yeah. um, unexpected CC contents. They can really uh, wreck someone's day as well. Yeah. Uh, keep those things in mind when designing your bases. And I think that covers most, doesn't it? I, would say, I would say one more thing is, and definitely be in correlation with your other 10s in your clan. Because... You know, you want to have that diversity in the bases, right? You, you want things to be a surprise. So you don't want all of you having all your bombs in the core because that's what you think is best, right? Like, because it, it just becomes predictable. The, the yep. less predictable your 10s are going to be and not allowing 10s to, to triple you, first of all, and then maybe even defend a few bullies, you're going to be sitting in good position in the war, no matter what the case is, I would say. Most definitely, and this is the reason why in our clan you will see a lot of variety in Town 10 base building, because um, this is a very uh, meta style, as you would call it, uh, base. Like it's very simple, very straightforward, does all the basics well, but it's very predictable. Yes. So um, yeah, make it unpredictable. Absolutely. So uh, you want to wrap it up here then? Yeah, man. I Sounds think that good. covers the, the basics. Yeah, exactly. Just our introductory videos, like Kat said, we will be continuing to work on this stuff. I do want to start trying to incorporate some friendly challenges just because I think it's really cool getting that live content. But uh, that's some stuff to be discussed down the road here. Um, but I think for now, that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help bag that next tree star. Until then, bro.